Oh, it is a Revitz and Jason. This is, um, this is Oh, I don't hear anything. Uh, oh. Okay, I don't want to do recording yet. Overlooking negativity today is our title in the class. Tonight and tomorrow is the third of Heshvan. The third of Heshvan is uh, the Yorzad of my mother in law. Uh, and I would like to dedicate the class in her memory. It's very, very special that the new little baby that was born a short two weeks ago, uh, actually tonight will be three weeks, I guess, right, um, was named Pesia. Oh, well, I mean, many of you know Pesia Levin in um, Calgary, and we have a Pesia Matasov in California, and now we have Hashem, the third little Pesia, Rosemont here in Pittsburgh. And it's very special. You know, I was speaking tonight to my husband, the rabbi is in Calgary, and he said he has to go. He lit the candle for his mother, and he went to say Kaddish. And he said, oh, how's little Pesila? Are you holding little Pesila? Like it, it was such a nice thing to hear. Like, this is continuation of life. Like, he goes to say Kaddish for his mother, but he knows there's a new little Pesia here. So it was, it was yeah, very special. Man. Week. Yeah, so we're gonna dedicate the class in her in her memory. Um, this week is Parshat Noah, and uh, in English we say Noah. And again, it's so nice to see everyone. I'm welcome everybody here, and we decided to to speak about overlooking negativity. We know that in the when uh, Noah and his sons, his family, went out of the Teva, I want to say went out of jail, <laughs> but Teva was a little jail for, for, for a little while, for almost a whole year, but it was a good one, they were saved. Um, they, um, he started, um, right, planting seeds and so on and so forth, and he planted uh, vine, vineyard and he had made wine right and he became drunk we know the whole story he became drunk and he was uncovered he, he was um, laying in the tent and he didn't realize that he uncovered himself and it wasn't nice it was not modest so his three sons were there now one of them um was inside and he come, that was the name Ham, and he told his brothers outside, he said, oh, come look, our father's nakedness is open, it's shown and so on, which is, was nice. So when the brothers came in, you read it in the Torah, when the other sons came in, it says twice that they came in with a garment to cover their father, so he doesn't lay open naked, but their face was to the back. They tried not to look, they, they didn't look, they just wanted to cover him as respect and so on and so forth. And the Rebbe is asking, what do we learn from it? That the Torah writes that they came in, you know, telling us that whole story all together. And they did not look at their father's nakedness and they, the face was in the, in, in the, like, you know, they didn't look, the face was in the back, you know, showing the face in the back, but, but the Torah, that's right, that they didn't see the father's nakedness. What does it mean? I mean, yeah, if they tore their face back, obviously they didn't see. The Torah doesn't just say extra words. The Torah wanted to teach us something. And very interesting what the Rebbe writes here. The Rebbe says that our friends, our fellow human being, people that we look at, it's just like a mirror. When we look at the mirror, mirror, right? We see ourselves. Actually, it's interesting here. I'm looking, <laughs> sitting here against the mirror. If our face is clean, then the mirror is going to show a clean face. But if we have something on our face, our body, on our hair, and whatever it is, it's going to reflect in the mirror, and we're going to see it. And what the Torah is saying, what the Rebbe is saying, 
That's the same thing when we see something in our friend, in our fellow human being, might not be a friend, another person, and we see that it's something bad. Like I'm looking in the mirror and I see, yeah, I have a blemish, I have something dirty, I have, I have to take it off. It's not something nice, it's not something good, whatever that is. In the spiritual sense, it's really, I see something that I have, something that is bad in me. And that's why I notice it by the other person. As we call the class overlooking negativity. The sons of Noah, Ham, the one that later Noah cursed him and so on, unfortunately, he saw what was not good that his father lay like that. And he, he had the same problem. He wasn't, I guess, careful and being modest and so on. And then he called his brothers. When his brothers came in, Shem and Yefet, it says they did not see the father's nakedness. What do you mean they didn't see? That's why they turned their face, but not just physically didn't see. They didn't see anything. They didn't have that problem. So they didn't see something bad. They just realized that they have to help their father to cover himself. But they weren't shocked from it. They weren't, they were, okay, they have to help the person because they did not have that problem. They were modest and they did not call it. Obviously nobody to come and look and so on and so forth. The Rebbe is explaining that the reason for it is when we see something not good in a fellow human being, in a friend, in a whoever, family, whatever we see, everything that we see or hear, as we know, we discuss it many times, is Hashgacha <clears throat> Pratit. It's a divine providence. There was a reason that Hashem brought us to this place and we had to see it. We don't always see the reason. If the person is clean, if the person had no problem in it with that particular thing that is saw by the friend, maybe from heaven, they wouldn't make him come and see it. But the fact that he did see it, so we can have two reasons. One is that I actually have that problem. I get really upset when I hear, when I see my friend um, I don't know, let's use something that unfortunately many times we make that mistake, speaking gossip. And when I hear my friends speaking gossip or somebody else, it annoys me so much and I get so irritated and so on. And most of the time is because I have that problem. So I'm so upset at it because I see somebody else is doing it and it bothers me because I know that it's wrong. And I have that problem as well. And that's why I get so annoyed at it. So when I see it, I have to tell myself, right, I have that problem and let me try to work on myself, not just tell off my friend. The Torah explains that if I would, if I don't have that problem by me, then I react differently when I see somebody is doing something so wrong. And then I'm going to try to help them get over it, to help them last, so tikkun, you know how do we say the word tikkun olam? Tikkun means to repair, to get better, to be a better person. I wanna give you an example. I'm thinking now, now that I'm learning it and teach, learning it together, I don't like to say teaching because I learned it and we are learning together. It's not I'm teaching you, teaching me, we're learning together. The many things that I say, I get very irritated, but I'm thinking like, for example, when people come to Chabad house and they are not, they don't dress tznias, they don't dress um, uh, modest. So there are different levels, right? I mean, we can wear pants and you know, they're not very tight in the winter, it's cold. I'm not saying you should wear it, not wear. I'm just saying, you know, the pants it's, but sometimes people come I'm speaking about women, so not modest, such a short, short mini skirt. We will all agree that to wear pants, it's cold, you, you this, you, you wear, you know, baggy pants or not very baggy, but whatever. And to wear a very short <laughs> mini skirt that is, you sit down and you, you know, you almost can sit underwear, I'm sorry, whatever, it's, 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 it's different. And many times people get very upset and they tell me, and, and I appreciate that. You know, ladies in the community, ladies in the show say, how, 
how many people have that dasa? They like to walk in like that, especially if it's Russian Yom Kippur and they sit down many times right in the front row and the rabbi is speaking and they put one leg on another and it's it's really, you know, I mean, you're not coming to the beach, right? It's, and uh, people get very upset. Usually when I see it, I guess because it's not something that is, like for me to come like that, it's, you know, I was brought up differently. It's not something I'm battling with, I guess. So when I see it, I would like to tell people to try not to. I usually don't say, I don't want to embarrass them. Depends who it is and so on. I usually don't say anything. But in me, I feel sad. I feel compassion. I think like, it's so sad that people are not sensitive enough, you know? It's one thing, you go to the beach, you go outside, you go for a walk, whatever that is. When you come to shul and it's, and it's yontev and you're in this and you're sitting in the front row, you should be more sensitive, you know, like we all think that, but I don't get angry. It bothers me. It, it hurts me that people can be like that. But I guess when I will see something else that I'm battling with that, that I do also wrong, and I see somebody else does it, it probably is going to shake me more and makes me, it makes me angry. And that's what I understand what they're going to be saying here because I have that um, uh, wrong thing as well. It's like a mirror I'm looking at and I still said, oh, this person is, I don't know, late to come to Shulman and I'm late. Or this person is saying gossip. I mean, I would love, they need to show some respect. You're right, Holly. I don't know, some things that I I can be, you know, with it's hard to dive and good, you know, things that we can, you know, many of us can do wrong. I can see why sometimes I would get upset because then I, it's a mirror, I see it in me. And that's what we're saying, overlooking negativity, which means is when we see somebody else that we're learning from the Parsha, somebody else does something negative, and we get really annoyed at it, the first thing you have to think, you know, what do I learn from it? Do I have it in me a little bit as well? Maybe that's why it bothers me because all of a sudden I see it with someone else. And instead of blaming myself, I blame someone else because I'm so upset at it. If I wouldn't be guilty of it, even maybe in a little way, maybe I wouldn't get as upset. We're not speaking about radical stuff, right? I'm not speaking about God forbid looking uh, at news and seeing, God forbid, terrible terror or should never happen and things that people do, you know, terrible crime or whatever. Obviously, we're not speaking about such things, you know, but normal, normal things of life. So this is something very, very interesting that we learn from Noah that, you know, from this whole story that when we see something bad, yeah, we want to learn on ourselves. We want to see what we can take off. And on the other hand, we do want to help our friend get better. So even if I have that wrong thing, if I want my friend to listen to me, if I, if I want my friend to be, um, how should I say, um, influenced by me, I have to know the purpose that Hashem showed it to me is in order to help my friend. But if I want to help my friend because I love them, him, her, whoever that is, I will do the tikkun, I will do the fixing, I will do the repair that I want them to repair to stop doing the wrong thing in a completely different way. Because when you say something out of love, the person will hear it differently. The same thing with, with the child, right? If I get, um... <laughs> you're so sweet, Cheryl. If we get upset at our children and we get upset because they did something wrong, a friend, a spouse, whatever that is. If we want to reprimand them, we want to say something, we have to know if I really care, I have to find the right time, the right words, the right situation, whatever to say. If I scold them in front of everyone, then I'm humiliating them. This is not the right thing to do. If I want my son or my daughter to stop doing something or they did something wrong and I'm saying in front of everyone, <laughs> What do I expect? They, they won't, don't listen. They just get humiliated. This is not the right thing to do because I had a hard day and I had a hard time and whatever it is. And I see that my child has the same negative character as me or as my husband or as my family. And I get so annoyed that my child has that character and I start yelling at them that this is, 
I'm wrong. If I want really to help my child, I have to do it with love. I have to find the right time, the right situation, the right spot, and so on and so forth. And then I'll be able to help. So when we see something wrong by someone, we have to evaluate why do I get upset because I have it as well and I have to try to get better um, for sure. Thank you, Cheryl. And, but I, we see it so many times, Cheryl, don't we see Cheryl that it's very wrong to humiliate and to tell somebody off in, the, in public for sure. It says it's, it's very, very wrong, but so many of us do it. And so many times we do it to people that we love, to people who are very close to us because we feel comfortable. We feel comfortable with our spouses. We, we feel comfortable with very, um, with family, with children, with very close friends. And we don't realize how much with in-laws, many times we feel very comfortable and we don't realize how we hurt them just by saying quickly what we think because we feel comfortable to say whatever we want, whatever is in our mind. And obviously we have to be very uh, careful. And that's the only way that we, when we want to um, help someone, I don't want to say to reprimand someone, we want to help someone to get better, to do the tikkun, to, to fix, to repair something wrong that they have. We have to behave like the two sons of Noah that did not, that when they heard that the father is, is laying open naked in the tent, they did not come in and look at it. They took a piece of garment and they walked without looking at it and they covered him. Because they didn't want to look, they didn't see see it as something bad. They said, no, we want to help him cover himself. They didn't laugh at it. They didn't do something wrong as the other brother did. So when we see somebody is doing something wrong, we don't laugh. We don't talk. We don't um, gossip about it. But we try to come and help them. And this is what when we overlook negativity and we say, no, I'm here. Hashem made me see the wrong thing in whoever I do because I have to become better. Um, I still have energy for a little bit more. Uh, Parshat Noah is so special, has so many, so many special things. I'm sure we can, we learned, we can learn more about it. Just mention a few things, which was very interesting, very interesting. And Noah, Hashem told him to build the Teva, right? The Ark. I'm sure we know that the Ark, he told him to build the Ark for 120 years. The Ark was very big. It was a big structure, three floors, the top were the humans, the middle were the animals, and the bottom was the, um, the garbage, all the things that they you know, need to put away and so on. But still, like it shouldn't take so long, couldn't he hire people? And we know that the reason he did it, Hashem told him to build it for a long, long time because Hashem did not want to destroy the world. God wanted the people to repent. He wanted us to do tshuva. He wanted the people to realize. How would they realize? Because they saw Noah <coughs> building an ark, building some kind of a structure. They said, what are you building? What is it? And then he told them that God said that he's going to bring a flood. What? So he, why is it going to be a flood? He told them the whole story, everything that Hashem told him. And the people laughed at him. The people did not believe him. And unfortunately, nobody repented. They didn't care. And it's interesting to see the difference between the two um, generations that were close to each other. The generation of the Dora Flaga, the, 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 the time when they built the Tower of Babel, right? They built a very low, tall, tall tower because they decided that they want to go and fight God in heaven. The people that were didn't believe God and they said, well, let us see and, you know, what we can do and so on. And then Hashem stopped them from building because they got, you know, they started speaking different languages, whatever. It was something, it was in another, the, the other parsha. It was a great scene that the people of the world have done, were doing against Hashem, against basically wanted to rush and they don't believe in him in his power and they thought that they can build a big tower and get to heaven and, and fight god what was their punishment the punishment was that that's how we got so many different languages that they started speaking different language and, and they stopped building because before they all spoke the same language and then when hashem made them forget the language and each one started speaking that's how we got so many different languages they didn't understand each other all of a sudden. So the guy said, oh, bring me the 
hammer, bring me this to build. And then the guy didn't understand him. So he got mad and they started fighting with each other and they got separated and the whole project stopped. Here, this generation, Hashem decided to bring uh, a marble, a flood, and basically killed everybody. Why? This generation, the people were very, very uh, rude. And the sin wasn't against God only. It was between themselves. They were hurting each other. They were doing things to each other. They were not nice to each other. They were raping. They were murdering. They were doing things that were very wrong between men and men. And Hashem got much more upset. And we learned from it how much God values, how we love each other, how we care for each other, how we behave between humans. And it's much easier, I know when we discuss about Yom Kippur, <clears throat> it's much easier to ask forgiveness from Hashem. And God will forgive us. But if we hurt our fellow human beings, we have to ask for forgiveness from our fellow human beings in order for God to forgive us. Obviously, if we ask for forgiveness and we meant it, and the fellow human being doesn't want to forgive, then it's their fault. We, we have the obligation to ask for forgiveness, it says, three times. But obviously, it doesn't mean to say, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, like little kids, we would say, okay, I said forgiveness three times. I said, sorry, three times, you got to forgive me. But, you know, if somebody really hurt someone and they had attempted three times to ask forgiveness in, in the right way and the person still doesn't want to forgive, some people are very high temper and they really don't want to forgive and it's not good to be like that. Obviously, it says that we should be from the people that always forgive and don't get upset and so on, then if I ask somebody for forgiveness three times in the right manner and the person still doesn't forgive, it's not my problem anymore. But, you know, what can I do? It's that person doesn't forgive and wants to hold a grudge for all their life, unfortunately. But just from the what happened, you know, from the marble, we see how she was upset. Another thing is interesting also that the, um, it explains that the marble, we know it was 40 days and 40 nights. And then it stopped raining. I mean, Noah, Noah was in the table for a year because everything was so wet until everything dried. But And um, 40, you need 40 se'a, 40, I don't remember exactly how much se'a is, but it's a different measurement of water that we need in order to have a kosher mikvah. So in the spiritual sense, the marble the flood was a mikvah to the world. It purified the water, the, the world, because the world was, people were so, so corrupt and so rude and so mean to each other that it says that Hashem said, why did I create the people if they're hurting each other so much and so on and so forth? And he told Noah, you'll be the only one that you'll stay. It says also that when they came to the Teva, uh, again, as I'm saying it so, Interesting, obviously, everything that says in the Torah has a lesson. It says that the men, Noah, went with the, you know, the sons, and and the, his wife went with the daughter-in-laws. So they were separated. And the whole time that they were in the Teva, they weren't allowed to be intimate with each other because Hashem said the whole world is suffering. So many people are being destroyed. You are being saved, but you are not here to enjoy and to have fun. You're here, you're saved. So save the animals, feed the animals, do that stuff, but not, they weren't allowed, you know, to be together. And after they went out, Hashem did tell them you should be together. So you should be fruitful and multiply the world because there were very few people in the world. There were eight people, Noah and his wife, Nama, Noah and Nama. And then there were Shem, Ham and Yafet in there three wives. So there were just eight people in the whole world. Uh, something else is interesting from the trying to think what we have learned that uh, one more thing I'll mention that it's Noah himself says that Noah was a very great man. He was a tzaddik, he was a good person, but Dorotav in his generation. And the commenters explain that he was a great person in his generation. If he would be in the generation of Avraham, Yitzchak, Moshe, he wouldn't be considered as a great person. But because he was the greatest person in his generation, people had to respect him and, and 
you know, and, and, and he was the leader. When he had to, when they had to go into the Teva, it says that he had, he had a hard time believing as well that the flood will come. And it says that um, the water, the water like started coming and they had to tell exactly the words, I see where it is, that Noah and his family went in. And when they started coming in, the people got very upset and they saw um, that it's actually starting to rain. And the rain was very, very high. The rain wasn't stopping. <coughs> and the scary part was also that it was raining from the earth. What does it mean raining from the earth? It says the earth, uh, we have a lot of minerals, a lot of water minerals, right? That we have in the earth, a lot of uh, healthy, I mean, we have it close to us in radium hot springs. Like there are a lot of hot springs that are under the water that, that are under the earth that, you know, are medical and so on. And it says that all of those things are opened up and water was coming from top and the bottom. So it was like, people realize what's going on. And it was a lot, a lot of rain. So they wanted to break, the people wanted to break, um, to come in and break the, the ark, break the teva. And um, Hashem said, it says Hashem sent wild animals, bears, and a lot of wild animals to protect. So they, the people were afraid to go in and break the, the ark and, and so on. Remember where I have the, the, those words. Yeah, uh, it's a set Parsha. It's a set Parsha because we know that the people didn't behave and we know that unfortunately Hashem decided to destroy them with it. Hashem promised that he's never, ever going to destroy the whole world again. He did not say that it's never going to bring a flood. And unfortunately, we had flood, a big one, tsunami, not many years ago. That, you know, that part of India and this that had uh, destroyed so, so many people and such a big part in the world. But the whole world, Hashem promised that he's never going to and they're never gonna, never gonna do. And that's why we have, uh, Hashem is showing us always the keshet. The keshet is the rainbow. And I don't know if you know that whenever we see a rainbow, we have to say a blessing. We say a special bracha. And the bracha is that, um, that Hashem baruch, that Hashem ogim al cholam, that uh, Hash, I'll try to translate, <clears throat> that Hashem is worthy enough that he is, um, that he's worthy to remember his promise, his covenant, and so on and so and so forth. That he did, doesn't change from what he had said. Because when we see a rainbow, that means it's not only always oh, because it's a rain and the water and, and the way it shows in science. Yeah, the way it shows in science because that's the way Hashem created it. Um, is because God forbid the world would have deserved a flood. And I know since we were little children in Israel, we were taught that when you see a rainbow, you don't go and tell everyone. Because when you see a rainbow, it's really, it's pretty, but it's not a good sign. And that's why you say a blessing that you think Hashem, that Hashem remembers. I like how you did with your eyes and how many people don't know. And it is very pretty. So when we see a rainbow, we say a bracha. And the bracha is, thank you, Hashem, that you remember. It does bring in history. We do know that there were some uh, there were some generations in history, um, there were such great sages, it, was, it didn't happen many, that there was never a rainbow in the sky. I think in the time of Hizkiyahu Amelech, the time of the kings, one king, there were a few that there were, a rainbow never showed because the world did not, the, that great sage was so strong that he was able to help the whole world to be in a, positive um, scale, if I may, and the world as a whole, I mean, we always have people who don't behave well, but as a whole, the world did not deserve a flood, destruction, God forbid. It's scary to think that way. We can discuss it more maybe another time, but that's what we believe, that's what we know, and that's why we say the bracha that Hashem remembers what he promised, and he's not doing it, so I don't want to uh, burst the bubble that when we see rainbows, especially kids, they love it. But we usually, you know, we told that it's not just it's not just that it's pretty, but it's 
there to teach us a lesson. And God willing, we start a, a special, uh, a special, how do we say, um, Parsha next week, when we start Parsha Slechlecha, the Parsha of Avram, the Parsha. I mean, in the end of Noah already, Avram was born and so on. So it's, so it's exciting. And let's hope that all the negativity that we had to have in life already passed, like with Noah and the flood. And now, from now on, will be only special things. So I would like to share with you as well. I don't know if some of you know that we have uh, something else special in our family, that Baruch Hashem, Mushka, and Levi had a baby. Uh, yeah, Baruch Hashem, and I waited for the end of the class to say it. Um, they had a baby on Monday. And um, we hope that the breeze will be on Monday. We're kind of preparing and we have uh, lined up food and lined up some people who can help. And we perhaps will ask other people to help a little baby boy, yeah, <laughs> for a breeze. So, um, but the baby's a little bit jaundiced. So Mushka said that hopefully they'll know tomorrow. They made a Bailey Rubin test and let's hopefully we'll know tomorrow. Hopefully it won't be last minute. I did have some kids that was last minute. It was hard to know. So when we're speaking about it, um, we always think she'll have a girl, right? Because they have three boys in her. But now I think by now they already know they have a boy's family. They have four little brothers <laughs> in her. So Shlaimula tells me, mommy, we were saying that Brooklyn has a girl's family, but really she doesn't have a girl's family because she has little ladies, so she has a little boy. But Levi for sure has a boy's family, so he's got only boys. <laughs> it was very sweet. I have to share with you, Levi sent us videos um, when they brought the baby home. So, you know, you want the baby to be happy. The, the other siblings shouldn't be jealous. So usually what we do is we get like little... A gift and we put it in the baby's crib, whatever, and then they see the baby and then they see the gifts and we say, see what the baby brought for you. <laughs> so it's good he took a video of it. So the little baby is laying on the bed and he's covered with just a little face and and then leave it. And they say, oh, we want to see the baby, you know? So they, he opens up the blankie of the baby and then there's like trucks. Well, my grandson's like trucks. So the three little trucks, you know, there and a little potato. I don't know, a lot of toys. And, leave, and they said, where? And they said, the baby brought you all gifts. So little Shmuel, those of you know, the middle boy, right? <laughs> He's so cute. He tells Levi, wow, was this also in mommy's tummy, all the trucks? <laughs> that was so precious. Sure. <laughs> you know, the baby came out of mommy's tummy. <laughs> no, and the baby brought them the trucks. And, the, you know, so... Where did that come from? It was very sweet. I don't remember what Levi got. He says, well, the baby got it for you know, whatever. Like, you know, they, then they went to play with the trucks. They weren't so interested in the baby. Then they went back trying to touch the baby and figure him out. But I, I think it, just, it was just so sweet. You know, the uh, kids are so innocent. So anyway, Borges, we're very thankful. And God willing, they'll have a girl too. But it's great. But I do want to share that um, some of you who know the rabbi in Edmonton, Rabbi Blachman, so Chaya Sora and uh, Mandy, Rabbi Blachman, he does of their JLI. So they have Kenora seven boys and she was expecting any day now. And yesterday she had her first girl of <laughs> the seven boys. That's a big oh, muscle. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was so sweet. We're all excited. And they named her Mushka. She's named after the rabbits because the mother is Chaya Sora. So she can't be Chaya Mushka, so she is Mushka. So we have another little mushkas, you know, my daughter-in-laws are mushkas. <laughs> so that was very sweet. So anyway, so we'll let you know, God willing, if there'll be, I hope there'll be a breeze on Monday. Usually to a breeze, we don't invite, let people know. If they can come, that's great because it's a mitzvah to go to a breeze. So if we invite someone and we tell them, oh, you have to come, then they like, it's, it's not good if they say, no, we can't. So that's why we just let people know. So I guess we'll send an email. And I think Mushka said she kind of prepared it, but she is waiting to when they hear from the nurses and from Rabbi Strzok that it's okay. Because, you know, according to um, Jewish law, many times, I know with my boys as well, we had that usually the doctors would allow faster to make a breeze, even though sometimes the, the baby can be still a little bit jaundiced. But according to halacha, usually we have to be more, more cautious, more careful. So we'll see what Rabbi Strzok will say, but he's great, the one from Vancouver. And 
And God willing, we'll uh, hopefully see whoever can on Monday. If not, will be another time. And next week also, the Parsha is very special. Parsha Slech Lecha is the Parsha of our Shleim Aleh's Bar Mitzvah, because Shleim Aleh is turning 13 or the 12th on next Shabbos, the 11th. He was born the 11th of Cheshwan. So the English date really is October 29th. He was born October 29th. But the Hebrew date was... Uh, the 11th of Cheshvan, so no more babies in my house, just the grandkids. He's already becoming a little man. <laughs> so God willing, we'll, um, yeah, we'll be there. So a lot of traveling lately. Thank God, should be just for good things. Not easy. We're not going to speak about the expense. We're speaking about, you know, just go on a plane, go down, you know. But Baruch Hashem, oh, I've got to see what you wrote in my glasses. But we're not complaining. Baruch Hashem for good things, and we should have all the happiness and all the negativity should be away and we should be, yeah, happy, healthy. We should all have little babies. I see my son, I will just take the baby up. I'm here. She was crying. So he took her, he took her up. She's so sweet. You know, the smell of the little newborns. Oh, she's so precious. I should have shown them to you, but uh, I didn't think quick enough. Anyway, Baruch Hashem. So it's just nice. It was a hard decision to make to go, not to go, because I know Mushka will need me. But um, Baruch Hashem Brafi is helping our tongues and um, and our daughters need our, uh, you know, our, they need their mommies, you know, my mother needs me. It's, I remember when I had my babies, it was very special. You know, when mom comes, it's, um, it's uh, yeah, thank you for everything you're writing. <laughs> it's nothing like a mother, right? And uh, I'll have to find some time to rest. I don't know when, but that's okay, whenever. I mean, well, for one to another, Baruch Hashem. And each one, Shleim, Mommy, when are you coming to me? When are you coming? I said, I've got to divide myself between everybody. I said, okay, next week I'm coming to you. So <laughs> next Thursday we have to head willing to New York for the for his, um, like he's going to get up to the tour. He's going to have Dali. I mean, the celebration will do, God willing, in Calgary in January. But uh, over there we'll do like a Friday night dinner. We'll do just for the family. In Yudis and Mushke's little apartment. Somehow we'll have to get in, all of us in there, God willing, and uh, it'll be actually nice. So, um, yeah, uh, have a wonderful Shabbos. Let's all of us have a wonderful Shabbos. And thank you so much for joining. And um, thank you again to Eugenia for helping me out last week. It was would be very hard for me because last week we were going actually on the plane to come to this <coughs> group. I wouldn't have enough time to and uh, the headspace to give the class. So nice right. to look right. together. And God willing, Hashem should give us the strength that we should be able to overlook negativity. And when we see something negative, just to learn from it and do tikkun olam, tikkun ourselves, not just the world ourselves and help people with it in the right way. And, and Hashem should give us only goodness and kindness and we should already, we should already see Mashiach. Amen. And, and Amen. mother-in-law Amen. should have an aliyah. Her neshama, she was such a special, holy, amazing woman in all aspects. Beautiful, physically, beautiful, spiritually. Uh, yeah. Amen. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Thank you. Shabbos. Special Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Thank you. Thank you. It should be very special. We should all have uh, many additions to our families and to Amy Strong. Thank you. Take care. Be well, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.